Hello, Paul Scott here on Wednesday the 10th of June 2015. Uh, usual video to pick up the odds and, odds and ends that I haven't had time to put into the main small cap value report. I've spent about 8 hours on today's report and I'm absolutely knackered so I'll do the last few bits on video. I've covered dialites, profits warning, um, uh, a good trading statement from 1pm, uh, re interim results from Shoe Zone, which I felt uh, generally I, I'm, I'm starting to feel more positive about that one and Boohoo trading statement which I think was excellent so moving on to the things I didn't have time to cover today first of all Ensor Holdings now this is a small building products group that um, quite a few friends of mine like and have held for a while I missed the boat on this unfortunately I, I don't know why I didn't buy any but um, probably the usual I've, I've just got so many companies on my watch list and, and that I'm looking at on a daily basis that you just you just miss things unfortunately so you can see here the shares have done particularly well in the last few weeks um, going from 72p up to a pound today up 13% today so clearly the uh, the market that's the three-year chart so it's been just a really nice uh, strong performer particularly in, in the last few months the market cap of 26 million so add 13 percent to that for today's rise and you're up at about 30 million so the figures here are for the year ending 31st of march 2015 and they look fantastic i mean sales are 18 percent to 36 million look at that operating profit up 84 uh, percent eps up 114 percent to 9.2p so really really good figures here um, what was the broker forecast let's have a quick look ah no broker forecast and I suppose this is where you can often find an advantage where you you get wind of um, positive trading statements from a company operational gearing kicks in and um, Bob's your uncle people have done very well on it you can see the trend of, of earnings per share there on the little graph that pops up on the right has been very good now, um, so, so I think this one's also got quite a good balance sheet from memory. There's some property angle on it. I'll close that window as I keep clicking on it. Now, my only reservation on this one is that it, we've always got to think about sustainability of earnings. So it's on a PE of about 11, based on these figures reported here. But it says somewhere in the narrative that they've had a particularly good run of orders from the water industry um, where was it well you can find that anyway it's it, it's buried in the here we are benefited from a surge in water company orders um, that was drawn to a close but that uh, there's some follow-on um, rise in the following year so that chucked out 1.1 million more profit for the group which is quite material so the only question mark I would put over this is how sustainable are these increased earnings that's the key thing before you get carried away and start putting things on a PE of 12 or 13 or more uh, if you're not careful if that was a one-off good year you you end up overpaying for the business I think to a certain extent it might be academic because the group put itself up for sale there's something about that um, further down here we are. Negotiations have taken place with the company's management leaders to agree a sale of the business to the management. Oh no, that's something else. That's sorry. That's that's one of the four companies within the group. Uh, I'm getting muddled up here. There was definitely no. I'm not actually. It definitely said somewhere that they had put the company up for sale. As I remember reading it before. So anyway, the the group seems to be in play now. Um, and you know, if they can get a good price for the whole group, then that's all well and good. They've been disposing of surplus property as well, and I think there were a couple past the year end. So altogether, quite an interesting company. Um, I don't think I'm going to join the party at, the, at this stage, um, but well done to holders who, who called that one correctly. So that's Ensor. Um, what's next? Ah, Castings. Now this company, it's, um, well as the name suggests, it's a metal forging company it makes this things like turbochargers for lorries and uh, various other things foundry you would think it'd be a lousy business but it isn't it's got very good margins um, the figures they're reporting today for the year ending 31st of March again turnover was down and profits were down 
so profit from operations. And look at that profit margin: 17.4 million uh, uh, operating profit on 131 million turnover. So that's a, well over a 10 percent operating margin, even in a relatively bad year. Look, uh, profit was 4.2 million lower than the prior year. That's as expected. They've um, I found the statements from this company very very open. If they don't know what the outlook is like they say so which is fantastic I wish more companies were like this the other thing that's noteworthy with this company is it's amazingly good balance sheet now look at this uh, 72.5 million current assets only 20 million current liabilities so you've got you've got 52 and a half million of surplus working capital there I say surplus I mean that's one way of looking at it, but anything over a current ratio of one, in it to a certain extent, you can regard as surplus. That includes 20 million cash and another 10 million on deposit. So they've got 30 million of net cash just sitting there doing nothing, basically. It's a very, very conservatively run company. There's nothing really to speak of other than a bit of deferred tax in non current liabilities. They've even got a pension fund surplus, which they don't recognise on the balance sheet. Um, so, so fantastic downside protection from the balance sheet there. Now, the only problem is, as I say, the outlook for this company hasn't been great recently. And by recently, I mean sort of the last year. So, um, let's look at the stock report. Here we are, castings. Uh, okay. Oh, wow. Oh, it's up. Damn. I knew it was going to go up. I should have bought some. It's, you've got a, a nice chart pattern there as well, but the reason um, I think, it, yeah, I looked at it before when it was only up a few pence earlier today. The reason stock rank of 80 uh, is not bad, the reason it's gone up is actually more, not necessarily about the figures. So broker forecast is 32.4, so you can see that down from 39.1 prior year. So the market was expecting earnings down, but the thing that caught my eye was that the outlook comments were more positive. Uh, sorry, that sense always castings. Here we are. The outlook comments today said, in general, we are now experiencing improved volumes from many of our customers, and it's at many of our customers' note, and it is anticipated profits will increase, providing the recovery continues. Well, that's about as bullish as you get from this company. They're very conservative. So, um, damn it, I've missed the boat on this one. First thing this morning would have been the time to buy. It. Never mind. <coughs> um, so I like Castings, good solid company. The only reservation I've got on it is the strength of Sterling. I couldn't see anything in the narrative about um, how uh, exchange rates are, are impacting them. So I think that would be something I'd want to look at, at a, a, a bit more. Earnings per share was 31.8p. So I think that was in line. Yeah, that's actually slightly below the broker forecast of 32.4. But it doesn't matter because it's the outlook statements that really matter. And you've got the safety margin of that fantastic balance sheet. So um, that's an interesting one. What else have we got? We've got... Ah, oh, now this is a tiny little company, which I do hold a tiny number of shares in this. I tried to buy more but couldn't get them. It does these on well. It does these things in airports when you, where you can win a supercar competitions, but it's cleverly structured so that it's not an uh, an illegal lottery. It's actually a spot the ball competition, which kind of morphs into a a, a draw for a car. Uh, profits are up. This is for, again. Oh no, this is year ending 30th of April. Profits are up for, nearly doubled from 0 0.45 to 0 0.8 million. But the trouble is, it, it's very very tightly held, and you can't get any stock. I, I tried for a week to buy just a small amount of shares in this. I only got a quarter of the amount I wanted when it was about 80 or 90p. Well, it's shot up to £1.43 now, as you can see. The market caps uh, 13 million if you include today's rise, which is, well, I don't think I want to chase it any higher, really. Um, but they're coming way ahead of broker forecast. Look, 0 0.8 odd million odd compared with 0 0.5. I suppose people are thinking, well, it could become a really good online growth story because they're now the website sales are, are, are doing well, and it's a very good it's a very good little company. But as I say, you can't get stock in it. Okay, the other one I wanted to just briefly touch on is Fly B. My heart uh, was in my mouth when 
this morning when I saw updates from Shoe Zone, Boohoo and Fly B, which are three of my of my bigger holdings. But actually they've all turned out to be okay. Um, it's a quite a complicated turnaround story this one so if you want to be bearish about it you can be if you want to be bullish about it you can be um, but I think reading through all of this blurb this morning uh, I was relieved that there wasn't any more bad news so there's a hefty loss of 35 million for the year but 12 million that is discontinued operations in Finland which can be disregarded there was also a 10.2 million uh, hit from aircraft loan revaluations, uh, four million provision um, on something or other, and then uh, this is the the big issue for Flybe. This twenty six million a year cost of surplus aircraft. They got they did have fourteen. They've now got seven um, E one nine five jets, which um, are, are unsuitable for the routes that Flybe is flying, and it's costing them twenty six million a year to have them sitting on the ground doing nothing which sounds absolutely crazy so but if you if you ignore all of these these one-offs and the, uh, the the idle aircraft the rest of the business made a profit of 16.6 .6 million it's also got a great balance sheet stuffed full of cash so it's not going to go bust and um, remember they raised money in a big big placing um, last year I think think off the top of my head I think it was at one pound ten a share or something they're half that now so I think this could well be over the worst now um, there was an interesting note from Cantors about, uh, out about Flybe today saying they're not entirely convinced about the business model but yeah there you are it's up four and a half percent today even though the results were, were, were no better than in line I think we can possibly conclude that we're over the worst there and look I mean it's 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 it seems to be finding a flaw in the mid to high 50 pence uh, in terms of share price terms which it's it's held now for four months over four and a half months I would imagine the next move might be up on that but um, it's not the what can I say I don't know I don't know we'll have to see there could be more bad news but I, I would have thought the bad news is mostly out now and in the price I want to touch on AO World as well because I think this is limbering up for another profit warning. I mean, the share now I'm short of this share and have been for a while. Uh, the valuation is nuts. It's six and still it's at six hundred and fifty-two million pounds for basically a very very low margin box shifter. Um, you can see that the the, the 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 share price is really tailing off here. Now, if you look at Alexa.com, it shows you web traffic. Or any website it's an Amazon website now look at boohoo over the last year uh, some really nice trends there that's one of the reasons I really loaded up heavily on the shares because you could see that the the web traffic figures are, are, are showing um, positive trend there if we look at AO world however um, where is it AO.com I think it is is it just AO.com or is it dot yeah, look, there we are. Now, compare this chart. Does that look like a growth company to you? It doesn't to me. Particularly, you know, it's it's, it's essentially flat on the year, uh, and the more recent trends have been dipping down. Also, um, the German part of uh, AO World is going nowhere, according to the the web traffic. Look, oh, this it's improved. Well. Mm, not really registering much on the scale there. I think their problem is they're going to have to spend a lot more on marketing. Well, I covered this in the main blog today on Boohoo. Boohoo is a cash machine. It's throwing off loads of cash, which allows it to finance its own big marketing spend. I don't think this lot uh, are able to expand in a way they thought they could. So I think this could well, well, it's a guess, but I think it could have another profit warning. Anyway, uh, that's it for today. Thank you for listening. I will um, speak to you tomorrow. Bye.